Hello and welcome to MathAndSciencePower.com. My name is Joe and I'll be your host. Please remember that you can help me to help you by subscribing to my channel, commenting on the videos, and rating and sharing the videos with your friends. Also remember to visit us online for a complete listing of our videos. Okay, let's start our discussion of friction with a simple example. Here I have an eraser for a whiteboard. And in order for me to slide this eraser across the tabletop here, I have to apply some force. And it should be observed that there is some force opposing me from, from pushing here. And that force is called the frictional force. And the frictional force is some force acting between the eraser and the tabletop. And the frictional force is always opposing the motion of the eraser. In other words, if the eraser is moving this direction, the frictional force is opposing me going back the other way. Now, let's add some more mass to the eraser, like with my cell phone here, and you'll notice that the eraser is harder to push. I have to apply more force to get the eraser to move. And even still, if I add more mass, say with my calculator, and now you can see it's even harder to push. So it could be said that the frictional force is proportional to the mass. Um, they vary directly. In other words, if the mass increases, the frictional force also increases. Now we should also notice that when we first apply the force to the system, the, when the block is stationary, it takes a certain amount of force just to get the block started. But once it moves, the force required to keep the block moving decreases. So when the block is at rest, it takes more force to get it started. But once it starts, we don't have to apply as much force to keep the system in motion. So those are a few things to keep in mind as we discuss friction. Now let's take a look at an example where we have a tabletop that is level with the ground and there's a block on this table and it has a mass and let's say that we know the mass to be 10 kilograms now if this block has a mass it must therefore also have a weight and the weight of the block will be equal to the mass of the block times the acceleration due to gravity so in this case our mass is 10 kilograms and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Therefore, the weight of this block must be 98 newtons. Now, because of Newton's third law, every force is met by an equal and opposite force. So the weight of this block is met by the force of the table, which is keeping the block up off of the ground. So this force is what we call the normal force. And it should be noted that the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface where the two objects meet. And the normal force is opposite direction of the force weight and the same magnitude. So in this case, 98 newtons. Now let's say there's a pin on the end of this block and we attach a spring gauge to this pin. Okay. And the spring gauge is used to measure force. Now let's say that we pull on the spring gauge until the block begins moving. Okay, the block starts off at rest and we pull on the spring gauge until it begins moving. Right as the block begins to move, let's say the spring gauge measures 60 newtons. This tells us that friction, which is always opposing any pulling force when two objects are in contact, must be equal and opposite to what we got here. So our force of friction is what we overcame to put the block into motion and the force of friction here must equal the 60 newtons. Now once the block began to move it didn't require as much force to keep the block in motion so the spring gauge laxed a little bit and it began to read only 50 newtons. So once the block began to move the frictional force dropped some down to 50 newtons. Okay. Now we, all, now, we said that as the mass on the block increased, the frictional force also increased. They were uh, directly proportional. Um, so when the frictional force increased, uh, 
the mass of the block increased. Um, and since the, the mass of the block was increasing, that means the weight was increasing and the normal force was also increasing. So what we can say is that the frictional force is equal to some proportionality constant, which we denote with the Greek letter mu, uh, times the normal force. Now there are two different situations for friction. One was when the block was stationary and we were, began to put it in motion, and the other was after the block was already in motion. So here we're going to call this the coefficient of static friction. This is before the block began its motion. And we can say the same thing about a coefficient for kinetic friction. Uh, this is after the block was already put into motion. So in our example, we want to determine what is the coefficient of static friction. Well, to solve for that, we need to divide both sides by the normal force so that these will cancel. And we get the frictional force divided by the normal force equals the coefficient of static friction. So in this example, our frictional force for the static friction was 60 newtons. The normal force was 98 newtons. And therefore, our coefficient of static friction comes out to be 0 0.612. And notice that newtons cancel here, so our answer has no units. This is just a proportionality constant. In other words, if we, if we know the normal force and we multiply by this proportionality constant, we can find what the, the frictional force of static friction is for this block in this table. Okay. Now for the kinetic friction, the frictional force was only 50 newtons or I'm sorry, let's divide both sides by the normal force first. These will cancel and we get the force friction divided by the force normal equals the coefficient of kinetic friction. So now let's plug in our numbers. The frictional force was six, uh, 50 newtons. The normal force was still 98 newtons. And we can see that we get 0 0.510 for the coefficient of kinetic friction. So after the block was already put into motion, it required less force to keep it in motion, only 50 newtons. Therefore, the coefficient of friction is different for static or kinetic. Once the block is in motion, the number goes down. Okay, now let's take a look at some uh, practice problems here. Let's say we have a similar situation where there is some weight on this block which has some mass therefore there is some normal force we're going to pull the block with some force of pull and some frictional force will oppose us Okay. now in our first practice problem let's say that the pull force here is 150 newtons and let's say that I know the coefficient of static friction already. Let's say that it's 0.6. The question is, can you find the mass of the block? Okay, and in our second problem, let's say that we do know the mass. Let's say that it's 15 kilograms. And let's say that the pulling force is 75 newtons and that's enough to already put the block in motion and that's all that is required to keep the block in motion therefore the acceleration of the system is zero once the block begins to move it's no longer accelerating it's maintaining a constant velocity so the acceleration is zero and the question is can you find the coefficient of kinetic friction okay so take a moment to see if you can answer these questions and we'll take a short break and when we come back we'll see if we get the same answers. Welcome back to MathAndSciencePower.com. My name is Joe and I'm your host. Please remember that you can help me to help you by subscribing to my channel, commenting on the videos, and rating and sharing the videos with your friends. Also remember to visit us online for a complete listing of our videos. Okay, so in problem one, we already know the pulling force. We know the coefficient of static friction between the two 
uh, materials here and the question is can we find the mass of the block so 150 newtons is what it takes to start the block in motion so if the the force of the pull in this case will have to equal the force of the friction since that's what it takes to put it in motion so we know that the force friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force and I need to solve for the normal force here so I need to dis divide both sides by the coefficient of static friction and these will cancel and what we will get here is the frictional force is equal to the pull force which is 150 newtons the coefficient of static friction is 0.6 and when I divide these two out I get 250 newtons so if that's my normal force the force of the weight must also be equal there are equal and opposite forces here so that means that the weight of block A is equal to 250 newtons and I know that the weight of A must equal the mass of A times the acceleration due to gravity and therefore if I divide both sides by G I can see that the mass will be the weight of A divided by G so the weight of A is 250 newtons G is 9.8 meters per second squared and when I divide these out I get 25.5 kilograms so the mass of the block A is 25.5 kilograms Okay, and in problem B, we know we already know the mass and we know the force of the pull. And we know that the acceleration of the system is zero. So the, the force of the pull must be equal to the force of kinetic friction. And we are trying to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. So I start out, since I know the mass, I can find the weight of A because the weight is the mass of A times the acceleration due to gravity so the weight of A is equal to the 15 kilograms that's the mass times 9.8 meters per second squared that's gravitational acceleration and therefore we get that the weight of the block must be 147 newtons now since the weight is 147 newtons the normal force must also be 147 newtons Okay. Now, what else we know is that the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Now, in this example, again, the force of the pull is equal and opposite the force of friction. So I already know the force of the pull, which means I already know the force of the friction. And we're trying to find the, the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's divide both sides by the force of the normal which is what we just solved for and we will get the force friction divided by the force normal equals the coefficient of kinetic friction so the frictional force is equal to the pull force which is 75 newtons divided by the normal force which is 147 newtons and this will give us the coefficient of kinetic friction so I get the coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 0.51 and again, no units because the newtons cancel, and this is just the scaling factor. Okay, for MathAndSciencePower.com, my name is Joe. Thanks for watching.